السلام عليكم uh, انا احب ارحب بكل الناس اللي موجودين I'd like to welcome everyone who attend today uh, for this workshop and uh, on behalf of you I would like to welcome uh, Dr. Leslie Richards from uh, University of uh, Waterloo the learning design group uh, his interest in how to make learning better for uh, learners uh, without further uh, talk, I will leave the mic for him to introduce himself. For, uh... Good morning. I think it's still good morning, is it? Um, if you have any difficulty with understanding what I'm saying, please stop me, okay? And uh, also, I, I traditionally ask questions not from the people at the front, but the people at the back. So maybe you want to move up further and I won't ask you any questions. Um, the, and also, this is an open session. And if you want to stop me and debate with me, that's how I learn. Uh, you can challenge me on every, anything I'm going to say, so please feel free to do that. So I'm with the uh, University of Waterloo, the, research, the Learning Design Research Group, and I've been involved in uh, learning through technology since 1983. And I do a lot of work, uh, I, uh, I've been doing a lot of work in in uh, Southeast Asia, mainly in Thailand, Laos, and Vietnam, uh, dealing with um, their students as well. And I'll be talking about three things. The T5 mapper, which was a model developed on a uh, uh, learner-centered model developed at University of Waterloo. And then I'll be talking about the D4L plus P tool, which is a learner-centered outcome system. And if you look at tools like Moodle or Blackboard or WebCT, um, they're all uh, management systems. They're not learn there's no learning in those learning management systems. They're all, you can push content into them you can push your PowerPoint notes into them, um, where, but it doesn't really structure uh, learner-centered learning the way it should. So this is what we designed this tool, and it's free. And then the T4, T4L, the TQF Mapper is an administrative tool for universities to administer how learning happens. Yes. Too small? Yeah. Okay. Can I get that bigger? I'll be talking about technology, um, and I'll talk about technology in terms of, is there any, any advantage to learning outcome with technology? And I'll be talking about challenges, instructional challenges. And the instructional challenges um, are something that nobody really addresses, but that's what is the main cause for poor learning outcome. And I'll talk about a, pro, a research project we did in Thailand with 1,700 students in faculty of sciences. And I'll show you the tool. I'll show you the TQF mapper. And if you want to work, I'll show you how to design for learning. I'm going to go through that process anyway with you. But if you want to, want to do, actually do some work, 
we can look at your courses and how to do that. So we're going to focus on, right now, most learning is all about how do I teach this material. If I don't teach it, the students aren't going to learn it. That's how everybody thinks. That's how you've been, you've been taught. And because you've been taught that way, you think that you're, this is how your students are going to learn as well. When I stand up here and lecture to you, that means I'm transferring my knowledge to you. Doesn't work that way. Well, you know all about that anyway. And also, if, if this room was full of students, 400 students, for a course, the average internationally for instructors getting students to courses is probably about a quarter of your students actually sitting in your classroom. University of Waterloo, 85% of their students miss 50% of their lectures, of your classes. But you still think it's important to lecture. Now we're going to move from how do I get my students to learn my material. And by doing that, it transfers your, your workload from 100% down to This is the, I won't spend too much time on this, but this is the, you have all this in your notes, your handouts. This is the T5 model. There's task. Task is a learning, op, uh, learning um, activity. And a task poses an open question. And this is the key to all learning, posing an open question. The key to learning is not memorization or rote learning. The key to is, I'm going to pose an open question to you and I want you to think about it and doing something about it and get all sorts of feedback. The second is tutoring. Tutoring is feedback. There is no feedback in the universities. There just isn't any time for feedback. I'm spending so much time lecturing and the only way I can get feedback is if you actually have done something. And the problem is that, that um, when I talk to universities in Southeast Asia, the students don't do anything. They don't do any homework. And the, the reason is that they don't do any homework because they say it's your responsibility to read ho the homework to me in class. So they don't do any homework because they know the instructor is going to read that. They're supposed to read chapter two. They know the instructor is going to read chapter two of them, two, two of them in that class. And you're going to read it to them because you think that's the only way they're going to get this new information. The, the third item is, is teamwork. And teamwork is, is, is the other key to su successful learning. Students don't like actually working in teams. That they think that, especially the bright students, they're going to move from a 98 down to a 97%. But one of the major criteria for students graduating is that they don't know how to work in teams. And this whole process, learner-centered, gets them totally involved in working in teams. Uh, the, the topics 
are the learning resources which in the past were your lectures, your content, and it falls way down the list. But that's, that's not the important issue for, for learning. And then the bottom issue is tools. This projector is causing me problems with the screen, so I'll try to uh, work with it. So, T5 was a model that came out of University of Waterloo, and also then from T5, we developed the D4L plus P tool, which is the online tool, and then from D4L, we developed this TQF mapper, which is the administration tool that allows students faculty members, deans, vice presidents, academics to monitor the effort that students are putting into right across the university into learning and the learning outcome that's, uh, that's coming across the university as well uh, based on from an individual faculty member to a department to an individual course down to an individual student. Is there a link between learning and technology? Okay, so in 1993, 3% of all the educational institutions in the U.S. had some form of e-learning associated with the courses. Then in 2005, 94%, which meant that there was a lot of new infrastructure from a techno learning technology point of view put into all the educational systems across the U.S. They put a lot of money into it, a ton of money. <clears throat> so based on this, and, and, and their, their whole focus was they wanted to change the learning outcome of education with, within the United States. I'm not an American, I'm a Canadian, so, but this is, this is data that I have access to. So, do you, what type of change do you think would happen? New I'm sorry, who asked the question? Yes. New technology? New technology? Well, what I'm looking for is, was there any change in learning? Don't be sorry. Yes. Okay. Okay. So you think that there's going to be change in learning outcome? Yeah. That their final grades are going to be different? Yeah. And you are you saying the same? Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and I totally agree. Is there going to be any change in learning outcome? That's my question. This is what the Americans wanted. 